we have two more things on and then at the end of the conference we're going to linger for a fireside chat we're gonna have a break and we're going to linger so our keynote speaker nancy sherman is just off stage getting ready to give us a wonderful keynote but before nancy appears on the stage i'm going to hold on to you for five minutes just to talk about how to be courageous when you can't save the world there are so many causes in the world everyone that seem to be calling us to do the courageous thing there's hunger conflict climate change, child abuse, cancer, the justice system, animal suffering. What is the cause that is calling you to be courageous? So for me, the big cause, the big tormenting cause is animal suffering. Sometimes I wish that I could just snap my fingers and stop every single animal from suffering across the globe. I have tried snapping my fingers that is not my superpower. The world continues as it is every day. So much suffering, so much risk and danger. I feel small, I feel useless, completely without power, let alone any superpower. The result is so overwhelming that I often don't know what to do. Sometimes I do nothing. But what I do know is that doing nothing is certainly the wrong thing to do. So I say, what would Cicero do? Cicero's guide for how to work out what our moral superpowers are um, appears in his On Duties. The tricky thing is with this guide is that being courageous, doing the moral thing is different for everyone. You have to work it out on your own. You have to do some serious self-examination. So let's get started. If you have a pen and journal handy, take some notes and then complete this exercise later today or tomorrow. First of all, bring to mind right now the big cause that is calling you to step up and be courageous. You might want to share it in the chat. As I said, for me, it's animal suffering. So what can Cicero say to us? How can Cicero help us work out what we ought to do? He says that we're all given four heads or characters or for the purposes of my cheeky title, four superpowers. The first two are assigned to us from nature. The third is assigned to us by chance. And the fourth is one that we choose, we freely choose. So let's have a look. The first head or superpower is universally assigned. We are all human beings and we have access to a great superpower, our brain, our reason and mortality. We are all attracted and drawn to the desire for knowledge and wisdom, says Cicero. And therefore we can identify where justice is, where injustice rather is happening. Once we do that, because we are social creatures, because we're creatures that live in a community with other people, with animals, with nature, we are then obliged to act. But how we act depends on the other three heads or characters or superpowers. So the second head or character is assigned to us individually. We are each assigned a unique set of talents, a personality, a character, a physical body, a certain way of experiencing the world. Some of us are permeable characters. We can adapt to different environments and do a hardship and change and uncertainty better than others. Others of us are more naturally determined and stubborn and steadfast. Some of us are big, massive historical characters. Some of us lead small yet not insignificant lives. But so, for example, I've always wanted to be the type of activist that goes stealthily into slaughterhouses, for example, taking undercover video and sharing the horrors to the world. But that is not my character. I get really weak thinking of those images and it's quite um, difficult for me to be in those situations. But um, on examination, my, my talents lie elsewhere. I'm a writer and a communicator. So how I can help the cause of animal suffering might not look as brave and courageous and risky as the stealth activists, but I can play my role too. So it's about examining what your individual talents are and also considering the third head or superpower. It's one that's given to you by chance. So that's literally 
the time that you live in. So now we all just happen to be on this planet in 2022. What does that mean for us in terms of working out what we can do? Well, we've got the internet, um, travel is easy, we've got knowledge at our fingertips. So the given situation, or maybe it's our socioeconomic background, maybe we've had certain privileges that other people haven't had uh, because of the fact that we live in 2022. So explore as you're working through this, the um, given time, the time right now, and what that offers you as an opportunity or an obstacle that might lead you to make a decision about how you're going to act courageously to save the world. And finally, we all have a personal choice, and that's the greatest superpower. We actually have a free choice. We can choose to step up, we can choose to um, act in the world, or we can choose not to. So what are you going to choose? How are you going to get to know yourself so you know the way to go in order to save the world? How will you save the world? Uh, we would love to know your stories. We actually have a blog over on paths2flourishing.org. Um, if you're inspired to write something in response to this talk or anything that you've heard or learned today, pop on over, share your story with us. We'd love to populate that blog with your voices. And thank you from me.